Laurel Canyon was a place people were attracted to, like a magnet. It was a very small community of musicians and long-haired weirdos. We were at the very center of this beautiful bubble of creativity and friendship. The birds, Neil Young, the monkeys, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, the doors, Jackson Brown, Linda Ronstadt, the eagles, the mamas and papas. Cue the tape. Joni Mitchell sat on the grass with her guitar. David Crosby was show up. Eric Clapton he sat there. Eric Dillon showed up there. There was a freedom that exploded. The music can't help but reflecting on things that are happening around it. There are periods in history when there are peaks. Paris in the 30s, the Renaissance in Italy, Los Angeles around 65, 75. When a chemistry happens between people musically, it's magic. Johnny. Good morning, Jeffrey. How are you? I'm doing great. This is such a thrill to talk to you. Thank you so much for talking to me today. It's my pleasure. So I heard that uh, in grammar school, you picked up a guitar and it tickled your soul and it forever changed you. Absolutely. That it did. There was a show and tell session where everybody in, in elementary school and the friend brought a guitar and he had to see the nurse. And so he asked me to hold it. And I held his guitar and strummed it and fell in love. And it's been a love affair since that moment. And uh, you're, you're no stranger to Laurel Canyon and all the music that came out of that. And you said back then it was a cheap place to live and you nicknamed it Oz? Yes, yes. And it was a very, very cheap place to live. You know, you could, as I mentioned before, you could find places from $60 a month to live there, a decent house, you know. So um, these are multi-million dollar homes now that were that inexpensive but you know the area was changing and people were opening up and moving out to the suburbs so uh, this was just an enclave of artists and musicians and you tried to emulate the birds in the beginning uh, but love found their own sound didn't they yes david crosby said you know dude you guys are great but there's already a birds so you need to find your own thing and so we took his advice and found our own thing and you also took some advice from Little Richard and you ended up uh, traveling to England with him. That, that's an incredible right. experience. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, um, Billy Preston and Jimi Hendrix and myself and Little Richard, we had a blast there. We met the Beatles before they were the Beatles. They were, you know, they were this um, group of guys that ran around following Little Richard around. It was just, <laughs> nobody had any idea that they would make the mark that they actually did on music. It's just fascinating. And you were responsible, one of the people signing the doors to Electra, but it kind of backfired on love, didn't it? Yes, it did. Because all of the promotional money went to the doors rather than love. So it backfired on us, but it worked out beautifully for them and beautifully for Electra and for music in general. And Peter Tork of the Monkees uh, was a nudist. And I understand you came home to find him in the full Monty in your chair? Yes. So, so I was, you know, wasn't pleased with that because I had gotten this really beautiful love seat and I was so proud of it. And I come home and there's Peter, butt naked sitting on my chair. So I wasn't, wasn't pleased with that at all. But that was his thing, you know, he's, he was a nudist. And, you know, the Manson follower sleeping in your bed, I guess that was an omen for the beginning of the end for Utopia of Laurel Canyon? Yes, it was. Yeah, that was, um, they call her Sadie. I think Sadie Glutz or Susan Atkins and uh, Bobby Boussole was a friend. And I came home because we would leave our doors open. And I came home and there he was uh, playing one of my guitars and she was in my bed. And so uh, I was not happy at all with, with the situation, but that was portended the end, I guess. It's, you know, it's not long after that, um, Bobby was involved in, in that horrible Manson thing, and uh, it changed everything. And one of the most important decisions you made as a musician is uh, publishing is where the money is, and most labels deny you to keep those rights, but Electra lets you to keep those. Yeah, that's why we signed with them. We had been offered contracts with Capital and Columbia and a couple of other larger labels, but Electra was the only one that allowed us to keep the publishing. So that's why we signed with them. And finally today, uh, Johnny, tell me about working with Allison Eastwood on this documentary, on this docu-series. This has just been amazing. We're having so much fun and them allowing um, the musicians to tell their story from their point of view. 
which is not often the case. So I, I'm grateful to be a part of this. I think it's just fascinating. And as a musician, do you listen to any kind of new music today? What influences you today? Yeah, I like Gary Clark. I think he's fascinating. Um, gosh, there's so many uh, musicians nowadays. I, I like John Legend and, um, uh, gosh, some of the, the kind of indie alternative groups I, I listen to quite a bit too. So music is, is definitely changing, but it's still there. There are some fantastic musicians and they're just keeping it going and that's wonderful. Well, thank you for your music and thank you for your story sharing them with us from Laurel Canyon. And uh, when you have a chance, come visit us in Las Vegas. We'd love to have you. Absolutely. We'd love to play there. And thank you so much, Jeffrey. Have a wonderful day.